Whenever SpaceX launches a Starship, the focus is often on the rocket itself, but equally important is the launch mount and the tower infrastructure, especially the Mechazilla system used to catch the booster. These systems are vital for the success of the mission, ensuring the rocket not only launches smoothly, but also returns safely. With Starship Flight 5, the world witnessed the first-ever successful mid-air booster catch. But the attention now turns to the launch infrastructure, especially the condition of the orbital launch mount after such a powerful launch and recovery. During the launch of Flight 5 on October 13, 2024, the Super Heavy Booster B-12 ignited its 33 Raptor engines, unleashing a massive amount of heat and force as it lifted the Starship into the sky. As seen in the image you provided, the booster appeared to be firing from the side during and after the catching process, which raised some questions among observers. The booster, caught mid-air by Mechazilla's chopstick arms, showcased an extraordinary achievement in SpaceX's efforts toward full rocket reusability. But the side-firing flame caught many off guard, leading to speculation about potential issues during the catch sequence. This visible flame is somewhat unusual, and some have speculated that it could indicate a minor issue such as residual fuel burning off, or perhaps a booster engine not shutting down entirely. This could also be explained by the extreme heat generated during re-entry, potentially interacting with the booster's thermal protection system. However, SpaceX has yet to release any official statements indicating that this was a critical failure. Previous flights have experienced more significant issues such as explosions during landing attempts, so this small flame may not pose a significant risk. The booster's 33 Raptor engines are a key component of the Super Heavy and undergo intense strain during both launch and landing. As the booster descended toward the Mechazilla arms, it continued to use its engines to slow down before the catch which could account for the additional visible flames. This could be residual thrust needed to control the descent as it approached the tower. Despite this, SpaceX has confirmed that there were no major issues with the orbital launch mount, which endured the extreme heat and mechanical stress without significant damage. The launch mount is designed to withstand the forces of the Super Heavy booster and the Raptor engines, which produce extreme exhaust heat during both liftoff and the booster's return. The orbital launch mount and the surrounding area must endure the immense forces of launch, which can often lead to small-scale damages like scorch marks, debris scatter, and occasionally cracks in the infrastructure. In previous launches, SpaceX faced challenges with heat damage to both the launch pad and the surrounding area. For instance, after Starship Flight 4, engineers noted heat-related stress on the launch pad. But those issues were addressed with upgrades to the flame trench and thermal protection systems. Following Flight 5, SpaceX and its engineering teams have already begun inspections to determine if there are any structural issues or maintenance requirements. These assessments are critical for preparing the infrastructure for the next test flight. While the booster was returning, Ship 30 continued its flight. The upper stage flew along its planned suborbital trajectory, aiming for a soft splashdown in the Indian Ocean. S-30 reached a maximum altitude of 212 kilometers and stayed at that height for over three minutes. At T plus 22 minutes and 24 seconds, the ship began its descent after reaching a top speed of 26,756 kilometers per hour at T plus 46 minutes and 54 seconds. The descent started normally, and the re-entry process kicked off at T plus 45 minutes and 33 seconds, with a pink plasma glow signaling that S-30 was entering the atmosphere and heating up. At first, everything seemed to be going well. The ship's parts stayed intact during the early stages of re-entry, and the flaps worked as they should. The cameras provided a clear view of the process, which was an improvement over previous flights where visibility was limited during re-entry due to heat and plasma. However, as the ship got closer to landing, problems started to show up. At T plus 58 minutes and 38 seconds, the camera footage revealed sparks near the joint between one of the flaps and the main body of the ship. At first, it didn't look too serious, but things quickly got worse. By T plus one hour, five minutes, and 53 seconds, flames became visible coming from that same area. The fire grew, indicating that something had gone wrong with the vehicle's structure. 
One possible reason for the failure could be an issue with the heat shield or the flap mechanism itself. The extreme heat and pressure during re-entry put a lot of stress on the flaps and their joints. If there was any weakness in the flap mechanism or a flaw in the heat shield, it could lead to damage like this. The joint between the flap and the ship is a critical point because it takes on both aerodynamic stress and high heat. A problem at this point could cause a failure in the re-entry process, leading to the sparks and eventually the fire. As the fire continued to spread, the situation became more critical. Just before the ship reached the water, there was a huge explosion. The exact cause of the explosion isn't known yet, but it could have been caused by internal fuel or other components reaching a critical temperature and igniting. The explosion destroyed most of the ship, leaving little chance of recovering any intact parts. This is a serious issue for SpaceX. While the Super Heavy Booster B-12 was caught successfully, and that's a big achievement, the real challenge is with the Starship upper stage. The upper stage is the part of the rocket that needs to go into space, carry cargo, and then return safely. If the upper stage can't be recovered and reused, the entire goal of making a fully reusable spacecraft becomes much harder to achieve. The upper stage, like Ship 30, is the key part because it has to survive space travel, perform missions, and then return through Earth's atmosphere. The booster's job is to launch it, but the upper stage is what does the important work in orbit. So, SpaceX needs to focus on figuring out why Ship 30 failed and fixing those problems before they can achieve their goal of reusability. While the booster's success is a good sign of progress, the failure of Ship 30 shows there's still a long way to go. Despite these issues, SpaceX announced that the mission was a success, saying, Splashdown confirmed. The ship landed precisely on target in the ocean, which was one of the main goals of this flight. Although the ship didn't stay intact, SpaceX achieved at least one of the two major objectives they had set for this flight. This means the flight still demonstrated some progress for SpaceX, especially compared to the issues seen in previous flights. The fact that S-30 lasted longer and had fewer problems early on in the flight shows improvement in the vehicle's design. Compared to earlier flights, particularly the third and fourth Starship tests, Flight 5 showed clear signs of progress. In Flight 3, Starship didn't even manage to separate from the booster properly, resulting in a failure to complete the mission's primary goals. The vehicle experienced engine problems early in the ascent, and both stages were lost before reaching critical milestones. In Flight 4, while there were some improvements, the vehicle still struggled during re-entry. Starship S-29 from that flight faced a massive failure due to issues with the heat shield, leading to significant damage long before the ship could attempt a controlled landing. In contrast, Flight 5 showed that SpaceX has learned from these previous failures and made real improvements in key areas. One of the most important changes was the upgraded heat shield. After the heat shield failures on Flight 4's S-29, SpaceX worked on reinforcing the thermal protection system, making it twice as strong as the previous version, according to Musk. The fact that S-30 survived re-entry for a longer period without major damage is a clear indication that these improvements are working, even though the ship ultimately suffered structural issues toward the end of the flight. For those who didn't see the Starship launch in person, I've got a surprise. You can still experience it with a realistic Starship model made just for our loyal viewers. Since you've watched this far, we know you're one of them. Head to the link in the description to grab yours now and relive space history. Thanks for watching, and we hope to see you in the next video.